All right, welcome back. We are going to be looking at the derivative rules for trig functions. So we've got our six different trigonometric functions here, and we're gonna go through each of them, and we're going to learn what their derivatives are, and then we'll do some practice problems where we begin to learn them. Because these derivative rules are gonna require a little bit of memorization, but trust me, they're not too difficult. There's actually a little bit of a pattern that you can try to remember, and I'll try to help you as we go through them. So we'll start with sine x, and a derivative of sine x is going to be cosine x. So whenever you have the sine function and you take the derivative, you are going to get cosine x. And then for the derivative of cosine x, we are going to get negative sine x. And now these two derivatives here could be proven using that limit definition that we learned in a previous lesson. However, you're not expected to know those proofs or know how to do them because they are a little bit beyond the scope of the calculus course. So for now, it is important that you just know that the derivative of sine is cosine and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So now let's look at the derivative of tangent x, and that is going to be secant squared x. And then a derivative of secant x is going to be secant x times tangent x. And so I like to kind of pair these two together, just like how I pair sine and cosine together, right? We know that the derivative of sine is cosine, and a derivative of cosine is going to be negative sine. You can kind of think of those as a pairing. They're similar in their derivatives, and it's kind of the same deal for tangent and secant. Notice how tangent and secant both have each other in their derivative. So that's kind of something you want to keep in mind as you're trying to memorize these. And then we have the derivative of cotangent, and that is going to be negative cosecant squared x. And a derivative of cosecant here is going to be equal to negative cosecant x times cotangent x. And so these two are also a pairing, and they're similar to the previous two we just looked at. So the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared x, and the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant times cotangent. So just like how you see secant and tangent in each other's derivatives, you see cosecant and cotangent kind of work together as well. So when you're trying to learn these, try to learn them in pairings. Try to learn sine and cosine, then tangent and secant, and then cotangent and cosecant. So let's look at some examples where we actually take the derivative of some functions where we see these trig functions in them. All right, so here's our first two examples. We'll start with the derivative here, and I've included our rules over here on the side so that we can easily refer to them and so you can see what they are as we begin to learn them. So we'll start with 3 sine x. And in order to take the derivative of 3 sine x, First, we note that when you're taking a derivative of a function times a constant or a constant multiple, you can actually pull that constant multiple out and just take the derivative of the function. So this would be equal to 3 times the derivative of sine x. And we know that from our rule here that the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So we would say that this is equal to 3 times cosine x, which is equal to 3 cosine x. So going forward, I'm not going to show this step, but this is kind of important to realize that when you have a constant multiplied by your trig function, all you have to do is multiply it by your derivative of that trig function. So now let's look at the derivative of negative five times cosine x. Well, we already know that this is going to be equal to negative five times whatever the derivative of cosine x is. And so if we go over to our rules here, we see that the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. So this is going to be multiplied by negative sine x. And so now we can simplify. We have a negative here and a negative here. So those are going to cancel out and we're just going to have positive five times sine x. And that would be the derivative of negative five times cosine x. So now let's look at two more examples here. We have the derivative of pi times tangent x plus four times secant x. So let's go through each part of this at a time. Remember that when we have two functions being added together, we can take the derivative of each of them separately and add those together. So this is not too difficult. We'll have that this is equal to pi because pi is a constant times the derivative of tangent x. And from our rules over here, we can see that the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. So I'll write that, secant squared x. And then we're going to be adding this to this part of our function. And we're going to have four times the derivative of secant x. And the derivative of secant x is secant x times tangent x. So we'll write that, secant x times 
tangent x. Now this is already an acceptable answer, but we could actually pull out a common factor of secant x out of each part if we wanted to simplify this a little further. And so I'll do that, although it's not really necessary. So we'll have that this is equal to secant x times pi secant x, because we had a secant x squared here, so we pulled one out, and then we'll have plus four times tangent x, because we pulled out that only secant x that we had in that term. And so then this would be the answer to our derivative. And like I said before, this is also an acceptable answer. I just like this form better. It really doesn't matter. It's all about what you prefer. So then let's look at the derivative of pi over two times cosecant x minus six times cotangent x. So this is very similar to the previous one. We can take a derivative of each part of this function, this term and this term. And in this case, it would be a difference. So we'd be subtracting this one from this one, but e either way, we're still taking derivative of each part. And so we'll find that this is going to be equal to pi over two times the derivative of cosecant x. Remember, pi over two is just a constant. So we can pull out that constant multiple and multiply it by the derivative of the function it's being multiplied by. So let's look at our rules here. We see that the derivative of cosecant x is negative cosecant x cotangent x. So I will write negative cosecant x cotangent x, and then we will subtract six times our derivative of cotangent x. And our derivative of cotangent x is negative cosecant squared x. So we'll have negative cosecant squared x. So now let's simplify. We'll have that this is equal to negative pi over two times cosecant x cotangent x. And then we have two negatives here. We have a negative six and a negative cosecant squared x. So those negatives are going to cancel and we're going to have a positive six cosecant squared x. Now we could do what I did last time where I pulled out that common factor. Last time it was secant x, but this time it would be cosecant x. Do you see how there's a cosecant x in each term? Now I don't have enough space to do it, so I'm not going to do it this time. So I'll just show you that this would also be an acceptable answer. We don't have to pull out that common factor. I just like to do it to simplify my answers. But in this case, this is a totally acceptable answer. And that would be the derivative of that function up here. All right, time for a little bit of a different example here. We have that the function of theta is equal to theta squared plus sine theta, and we wanna know what is the slope at pi on our function. So this is just a good reminder that we're not always gonna be taking the derivative of x as our variable. We can take derivatives of other variables too. A lot of times we just get so used to x that when we see something else, we get a little confused. So it's important to know that whatever variable that your function is defined with, you are allowed to take a derivative of. So in this case, our function is defined with theta, so we are allowed to take a derivative of this function with respect to theta. So if we wanna find the value of pi on our derivative, we have to first find a derivative of our function. So let's do that. We'll have that f prime of theta is going to be equal to the derivative of that function, and we see that we have a power rule here, right? We have a variable to the second power. So we'll multiply the power of two times our variable theta, and we'll subtract one from our power. And then we'll have the derivative of sine theta that we need to add. And if we go over to our rules, we see that the derivative of sine x is equal to cosine x. So in this case, the derivative of sine theta would be cosine theta. So we'll have that this is plus cosine theta. So then if we simplify this, we'll have that the derivative is equal to two times theta plus cosine theta. So now we just have to evaluate this at pi and we'll find our answer. So f prime of pi is equal to two times pi plus cosine of pi. And we know that cosine of pi is negative one and so this is going to be equal to two pi minus one. And that would be the value or the slope on our function at the value theta equals pi. All right, for our next example, we're gonna look at the function x plus tangent x minus cosine x, and we just wanna know what is the derivative of that function. That is what this notation means right here. What is the derivative, or f prime of x, of our given function? So let's take the derivative. We'll have f prime of x is equal to the derivative of x, which we know is just going to be one, right? We have that rule that when we take a derivative of a variable that's to the first power, it's just going to be equal to the coefficient of that variable, which is just one. And then let's look for our derivative of tangent x, and we see that it is going to be secant squared x, so we'll have plus secant squared x, and we're going to be subtracting the derivative of cosine x, so we'll have minus, and I know from our rules that the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So this will be 
negative sine x. Okay, so now let's simplify. We'll have that this is equal to 1 plus secant squared x, and these two negatives are going to become a positive, so we're going to have plus sine x, and that would be the answer to this derivative. All right, now let's look at the example y equals 3 over x minus 8 times cosecant x. And we want to find a derivative of this, or y prime. But before we take our derivative, I'll notice that we're going to have a power rule here, but it's a little difficult to see how we would do it because our x is in the denominator of a fraction. So I'm going to first redefine our function here. So I'll have that y is equal to 3 times x to the negative first power, and that's going to help us be able to visualize our power rule a little bit better. And then I'll just continue to rewrite this with 8 cosecant x. All right, so now we're ready to take our derivative. So we'll have y prime is equal to 3 times our exponent, negative 1, times x, and then our exponent, minus 1, minus 8, times our derivative of cosecant x. So let's look over here. We see that derivative of cosecant x is negative cosecant x cotangent x. So we'll have negative cosecant x cotangent x. And now let's simplify. We'll have this is equal to negative 3x to the negative 2 power. And then we'll have a negative 8 and negative term here. So this is going to be plus 8 cosecant x cotangent x. And then finally, to finish off our simplification, we just have to take our negative power and put it in the denominator so it is a positive power. So we'll have that this is equal to negative 3 over x squared plus 8 cosecant x cotangent x. And that is the derivative of our function. All right, now let's look at y equals 9 cotangent x minus 2 times the square root of x plus 5 times secant x. And in this case, we want to find the derivative in this form. When we have a function defined with y, we can also represent that derivative with dy dx. We are taking a derivative of y with respect to x. So just like we do with the last one, I'm actually going to rewrite this function first because I see we have a square root of x that I would rather write as x to the 1 half power so I can more easily see my power rule when I go to take my derivative. So this is going to be y equals 9 cotangent x, that's not going to change, minus 2 x to the 1 half power. And then we'll add our 5 secant x. All right, so now we are ready to take our derivative. So dy dx is going to be equal to 9 times the derivative of cotangent x, which we can see from our rules is negative cosecant squared x. So we'll have negative cosecant squared x minus 2 times our exponent, 1 half, times x to 1 half minus 1. Remember, we always subtract 1 from our exponent with our power rule. And then we'll have plus 5 times the derivative of secant x, which we can see is secant x tangent x. So now let's simplify. We'll have that this is equal to negative 9 cosecant squared x, and then this negative 2 and 1 half is going to simplify to just negative 1, right? Because 2 times 1 half is 1, so we'll have minus x to the negative 1 half power. 1 half minus 1 is going to give us negative 1 half, and then we'll have plus 5 secant x tangent x. So then to finally simplify this, we know that our two trigonometric functions, those are good, but we just want to change this to have our power in the denominator so it's positive, and we also know that when we do that, we'll have x to the 1 half power, so that will just become the square root of x there in the denominator. So let's rewrite this one more time, and we'll have that this is equal to negative 9 cosecant squared x minus 1 over the square root of x plus 5 secant x tangent x. And that would be the answer to this derivative. All right, finally, let's look at a more complex example. And here we are going to determine the points where the function of theta equals theta plus 2 cosine theta has a horizontal tangent line on the interval 0 to pi. And remember, a horizontal tangent line is just where the function has a slope of 0. So all we have to do in this scenario is take a derivative of our function and then set it equal to 0 and solve for theta. So we'll have f prime of theta is equal to the derivative of theta, which is going to be 1, plus 2 times the derivative of cosine, which we know is negative sine theta. Remember, over here we have the derivative of cosine x is equal to negative sine x, but we're not using x in this equation. We have theta, so it's going to be negative sine theta. So then let's simplify this. We'll have that this is equal to 1 minus 2 times sine theta, and now let's set this equal 
to zero and solve for theta, and that will tell us where our function's slope is zero so that we can find the points where there are horizontal tangent lines. So we'll subtract one from both sides, and we'll have negative one equal to negative two times sine theta, and then we can divide both sides by negative two, and we'll have one half, because those negatives will cancel, is equal to sine theta. So now all we have to ask ourselves is where is sine theta equal to one half? And we know that for this interval, that sine theta is going to be equal to one half when theta is equal to pi over six and five pi over six. So now that we have our two values of theta, we also want to know what the output is for those values so we can actually find the points where we have that horizontal tangent line. But I'll quick clean up my work first. So now we want to plug each of these values into our original function and see what our output is. So first we'll have f of pi over six, and that's going to be equal to pi over six plus two times cosine of pi over six. And we know that cosine of pi over six is going to be square root of three divided by two. So this is going to be equal to pi over six plus two times the square root of three divided by two. And we can simplify this because this two and this two will cancel, and so we'll have that this is equal to pi over six plus the square root of three. So that would be our y output for pi over six. And then if we plug in five pi over six, we'll have that this is equal to five pi over six. Remember, we're plugging into this function here, and that's going to be added to two times cosine of five pi over six and that will be equal to five pi over six plus two times cosine of five pi over six, which we know is negative square root of three divided by two. So we'll have negative square root of three divided by two. Once again, those twos will cancel, and so then we will have that this is equal to five pi over six minus the square root of three. So now we see that our points where our function has horizontal tangent lines are going to be the coordinates pi over six comma pi over six plus the square root of three and five pi over six comma five pi over six minus the square root of three. So I'll quickly write those so we can see them visually and then we can wrap this lesson up. Okay, so we found that our two points were pi over six comma pi over six plus the square root of three and five pi over six comma five pi over six minus the square root of three. So that would be the answer to this particular problem. We wanted to know where the slope was zero or where we have horizontal tangent lines on this function and we found those two points right here. All right, so that's a good overview of how to find the derivative of trig functions and how to use them for different scenarios. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments and I will try to answer them. But if you don't and you just wanna see some more examples, I'll have an example video linked at the end of this video that you can click on as well as in the description below. But for now, that's all I have, so I will see you next time.